Welcome back. <laughs> hey, John Andrew Hart. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's John Andrew. I was praying. I was like, okay, this is kind of loud. Can I pull this off? <laughs> But I'm telling you, I was so thrilled. Hey, Randall Johnson, good morning, sir. <laughs> Granny's place, going all over the country, and to Nashville, Tennessee, young man and his precious wife. Such a gift to the body of Christ. Hey, B. Thomas, let's go. Candy Guyton, Tiffany, good morning, welcome. If you're joining us from an evening time zone or an afternoon time zone, we welcome you. Please put that in the chat. It would be great to know. I want you to just uh, say this with me, Impact Monday. Amen. And I want you to um, also just come to the place. Uh, even now, oh, it, I just, just put it in the chat. Uh, Holy Spirit. Just write that in the chat. Holy Spirit. Good morning, Elder Cheryl Wilson, Pastor William Limon. Let's go. Just write in the chat. Holy Spirit. Listen, Africa was brand, oh, brand, brand new. It was all of that. And I'm going to be talking about that. And it uh, really challenged me. You know, I've been teaching. Uh, uh, this is year four, year four. So I thank you all for allowing us a recess and a reset. And while I was away, I had the opportunity to go back to my home church in Benin City. And my home church in Benin City is Church of God Missions uh, International, where uh, Dr. Margaret Benson Idahosa is the Archbishop and Presiding Prelate. So I had this wonderful privilege to go to celebrate um, our women's convention, Quiffy, Christian Women Fellowship International. And as I was there celebrating the 50th year, I was honored for serving 40 years. Uh, their time is passing. Time is moving. It's not waiting. I feel the same, <laughs> but I recognize that I'm 40 years older than when I first went to Benin City. Wow. And when I first met Archbishop Benson Andrew Inahosa. But being back home was amazing, Pastor Jacqueline Bowers. And so seeing Africa, seeing <laughs> we're the most I'm holding down that baritone. You turned 70 last Monday. Happy birthday. Praise God. The Trent House. Come on. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition. And we are all moving. We're all in that line. We're all in that line. Praise God. We're all lining up. Tangerine, my prophet, God bless you. Uh, what a word of the Lord is in your mouth for me and for this generation. And one of the things, Stephanie Bridgeford, Gloria Dean, uh, Andrea, that God really put in my heart, Eric, is it's the renewal and refreshing of the Holy Spirit, the renewal and the refreshing of the Holy Spirit, that God is stirring a renewal. God is stirring uh, a revival, but more than a revival, it's a renewal. Uh, it's a renewal, my God, 40 years of serving that one body of believers. And to see all the women bishops, now I was the first uh, female bishop of Church of God uh, in uh, November of 1995. The Archbishop went home to be with the Lord in 1998. And in a few days, we will celebrate his 86th birthday, although he's in heaven uh, celebrating uh, immortality. <laughs> but uh, it pays to serve someplace consistently. Hey, Suleiman, God bless you from Pakistan. God bless you. Glad to see you. Kai Kai. So the renewal, renewal movement. Now, as God was uh, sharing with me over this time of reset, uh, I began to think about our time in the summer 
in Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. I hope that you are still meditating and marinating on that. Dr. Thea Wilson, let's go, baby. Welcome. Uh, yes, Jeanette Thompson. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love this class. Thank you. Hey, Grandma Alert. Hey, what's going on, y'all here on IG? And uh, what really came to me and was stirring in me uh, is I hope that you will understand this without getting offended. <laughs> without getting offended. Paul talks about something to the Corinthian church and uh, it just kind of hit me while I was in um, Nigeria. And Paul talks to the church in Corinth. I'm mean, going to run over to pray. Hey, tell y'all, baby is here. Good morning. Uh, Elder Carmelita Chestnut, renewing, renewing. Eric, renewing. Sheila Oden, good morning. God bless you. Those of you that are joining us in the afternoon from a different time zone from the evening, God bless you and thank you for joining. We are back. Hey, <laughs> we are back, Ann Thompson. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And um, I want you to hear this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk and not solid food. Wow. <laughs> for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans. For when one says, oh, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not mere mortals? <laughs> what, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you have come to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task. For I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has, made, has been making it grow. <laughs> Tanya Graham, y'all up in here. Yes, Sonia Neal, good morning. Woo, that's Sassy Nicole. Let's go, Sonia Palmer. Let's go. We are back, Shannon Hall. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they shall each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service and you are God's field and God's building. And this scripture jumps out to me this morning as we get ready to go into our next semester season, the next six weeks. I want to be stirring you, making you aware of this global renewal that's happening. This global renewal that's happening. So the next six weeks as we move into this particular semester of training and teaching and discipleship, I, I want us to move with a global pace, with a global awareness, with a global awareness, a global sensitivity, a global uh, knowing a global wanting, a global appetite 
for what Holy Spirit is doing around the world. Now, this particular passage of scripture, I believe is the current state of the church. And when I say church, I don't mean just my denomination, your denomination. I mean the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, particularly in America. And you almost have to go out of America to experience the drought, to look at the drought that is in America. You have to go out beyond America to experience the fullness, the renewings, the revivals, the refreshings that's really happening because you may or may not experience it in America as it is happening in the global uh, Christian space. Mm, hallelujah. This scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, I really wanted to address you as people who live by the Spirit. But I really couldn't because you are still worldly. Now, I know that for some, Evangelist Campus, Tiffany, for some, go ahead, like, tag, and share. Uh, for some, worldly means sinful. For some, worldly may mean um, carnal or um, fleshly. Maybe fleshly is a better way. <laughs> QM, <laughs> Angela Wallace, Tanya Shelton, coming in, the, coming up the timeline. Um, <laughs> Tara, I'm telling you. But Paul is not referring to them worldly as in sinful, as in fleshly or living in a fleshly way. He is addressing them as worldly to indicate their immaturity. In other words, the petty things of life are still a liability, uh, still uh, uh, the framework, still the mindset, pettiness. So they're fighting about who brought them to Christ. Uh, Paul, uh, Apollos, uh, this one, that one. They're, they're, they're debating about something extremely petty. And so he says, I really thought by now you would be walking in the spirit. You would be living in the spirit. However, oh, buddy, I'll get that to you. You are still worldly. You're still carnal. You're still petty. You're still fooling around with your emotions and you're still clowning about let me tell you this. L listen, folks. Get you some help. Listen to me. Get you some help. All of these grown babies, all of these grown babies, you are exhausting. Get you some help. The church cannot fix your childhood. The church cannot fix your trauma. You are exhausting. And every time you don't like something, you're going to leave the church. Just leave, folks. Go get you some medication. Go get you some help. Go get you some, some real mental, emotional 
stability and then come back to church. Stop making the church your problem. You were not well when you got to the church. And the church cannot fix you. You are exhausting. And I said what I said, and I'm saying it for a reason. These babies in grown people's clothes with these emotional expectations of God, of the church, of the leader, go get you some help. Okay? <clears throat> Stop making the church your problem. You were not well when you came. Your pastor is not your mother or your father. Your shepherd is called of God to mature you in Christ that you may come into the image of Jesus Christ. Not, we don't have time for 20 meetings, 35 counseling sessions, one-on-ones, lunch, dinner. You want all of our time. Go get you some help. Stop making the church your counseling and therapy center. Now, some of us have counselors on staff and some of us don't because that's not, we don't have the resources or we don't have the calling. But all of this pettiness, all of this I'm falling out with you and I'm leaving the church. I'm not coming back. Okay. I want you to understand that reflects on you and your immaturity in the spirit. But I just kind of time, folks. Jesus is coming back. We are in the earth to usher Christ back into the earth and to establish kingdom citizens. Go invest in your own deliverance. Go invest in a therapist. Go invest in counseling. Go invest when you get jealous of the leader, when you there, there's a problem. When newcomers come and you feel some kind of way, I'm a, I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos. I, go get you some help. And preachers, stop preaching to their trauma. Stop preaching to their triggers. Stop preaching to their fears. Stop building your entire preaching and homiletical system on preaching to mentally ill, emotionally immature people to keep them in that place and justify their carnality. Go get you some help. Get up off of the breast of your leader. Get up off of that. Get out of the space where you think because you have access that you have a individualized relationship. This ain't no IEP. <laughs> Get you some help. We are called to preach the gospel. Preach the kingdom. Preach the word of Christ to get you to fall in love with Christ. Stop falling in love with us. Stop making the church match.com. 
Listen, folks, stop triggering people because you're triggered. People don't like you. People coming after you. That's not the gospel. And it keeps people immature. Now, now I'm serious about this. I'm serious about you need a social worker, a pastor, a therapist, and go get it. But understand what God's church is for. And stop, stop all of this microaggressive behavior. Stop all of this microaggressive behavior. That if I, if I don't get that time, I'm leaving. If, if, if that's what was happening in this church. I'm a Paul. I'm of Apollos. What? Paul said, y'all just going to be. This this crazy, this how you're going to be. And I've introduced you to the spirit of God. I've introduced you to the gifts of the spirit. And y'all are fighting about who is it? Listen, the church cannot fix you because you have had death in your family. The church, the leadership cannot fix the fact that your father wasn't there, that you have a dysfunctional family unit. The church cannot fix you. You're going to have to use multiple tools. You're going to have to engage multiple resources. Woo! Shanda, hey, Kanda, ain't nobody liking me today. You're going to have to use the church, the therapist, the doctor. You're going to have to engage multiple platforms. You're going to have to invest in your development and your healing. <laughs> Stop texting me these crazy text messages. And because you have your leader's phone number does not mean that you have access to text us stupidity. You're going to have to get multiple resources to get well. Now, I, 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 want, I want you to understand what the church's responsibility is. Is to teach you how to walk in the spirit. Is to teach you to love Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can teach you how to love Jesus. Somebody write that down. We are here to teach you how to love Holy Spirit, to engage Holy Spirit, to be intimate with Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can teach you how to love Jesus. See, the more you engage Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit will teach you about Jesus. The more you know about Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to teach you about Jesus. The more you love Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to teach you how to love Jesus. See, you are focusing on the wrong stuff. The church is not a be all, in all, through all, for all. You're going to have to engage multiple platforms, multiple resources to be well. Your faith will make you whole, but you're going to have to do the work in your soul. Woo, Rabbi Hataba Hadikshe. Woo. When you come into a spirit, healthy church. And I said what I said. When you come into a spirit healthy church, I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to say to you. I want you to get something to write with and something to write down because I don't think we understand what Holy Spirit is doing. Paul says with all of this immaturity 
Are you not acting like mere men? What is the benefit of your Christianity? What is the benefit of your salvation and your redemption if you are still unhealthy? <laughs> Woo, Shataba. Woo. Listen to me. Holy Spirit is stirring a global renewal and a global refreshing. And there are people in the body of Christ that are hungering for God that want to please God with all of their hearts. And they are not interested in these cult-like churches. They're not interested in these cult-like pastor congregational relationships. They're not inter they are interested in pleasing God, serving God, a renewal of Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are not interested in sleeping with their leader, of manipulating leadership, of being carnal with their leader, these cult-like churches. And some of you don't even know how unhealthy it is until you get in to a spiritually healthy church. Oh, I'm teaching better than you. I'm teaching. Evangelist, I believe you, I'm teaching. And nothing will test your relationship with Christ like joining a healthy church. When you join a healthy church, the first thing it's going to do, write this down, is it's going to expose your toxicity. Come on. When you join a spiritually healthy church where there are spiritually healthy people and there are spiritually designed structures the first thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to see how toxic you are <laughs> whoa shit got my knee old shot <laughs> come on valerie thomas you're going to it's going to expose your toxicity it's going to expose your legalistic perspectives it's going to expose your codependencies. Oh, somebody help me up in here. I'm preaching better than, than y'all are shouting. <laughs> oh, my God, my God, my God. <laughs> oh, by my shake. You stay in this class, darling, and you'll get healed. But you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to do the work. You got into a cultic occult environment because you have certain triggers and expectations that were not godly. You can't blame other people. You have to say, you have to say, why was I there? Okay, I'm talking better. When you join a healthy church, when you come into a healthy, spiritually mature environment. The first thing that's, that's, that's going to show up is how codependent you've been. It's going to show up. It's going to show how toxic you are. It's going to show how legalistic you are. Your perspectives, your legalistic perspectives. When you come into a healthy church, when you come into a healthy Holy Spirit environment, you're going to get offended. You're going to be triggered. Because you're going to begin to see how absolutely your, your life is not aligning with Christ. You're going to see it. The preaching is going to make you mad. But the way that people handle you, you're not going to feel safe. You're not going to feel lovely and warm because they're spiritually healthy. They're not going to get into your cultish ways and to your cultish expectations. And, 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 and the reason that God is doing this is because there is a global renewal happening. See, church has become this little shopping center where you can just go and, 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 and shop and uh, get what you want from a church. And if you don't like it, then you can go someplace else. See, the church has been polluted by worldliness, 
and by worldly systems. Now, when you get into a spiritually healthy church with spiritually healthy leaders and they don't they don't cuddle you and they don't stand for your foolishness and they don't want to be your your they don't want to breastfeed you. You're going to realize how toxic. You're going to realize how legalistic your perspective is and you're going to find yourself offended by leaders who teach the truth. I'm preaching better than y'all. Woo! <laughs> I need somebody to hear what I'm saying to you. I, I need y'all. <laughs> I need Shaka. <laughs> Woo! I need you to hear what I'm saying to you. And many of you don't realize that there are spiritually healthy leaders and spiritually healthy churches. Because you have been in toxic cult-like churches for so long. And you seek for that kind of engagement because you've been dysfunctional for years. Paul says, are you not carnal? Are you just going to live like mere men? <laughs> You're going to find yourself offended by the truth. You're going to have a strong leader. You're going to come into a strong environment that has spiritually healthy systems, that has that is developing people for a global renewal. And you're not going to have access like you want. You're not going to be shopping with your leader and eating with your leader and meeting with you're going to have to grow up by the word and the leader is going to teach you how to live by faith by demonstration and by precepts and you're going to find out that your 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 level of life is way below the norm. You're going to experience a, 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 a rude awakening that, dang, I'm, I'm, I'm really immature. Dang, I'm, I'm really not healthy. You, you're not, you're not, oh, Dr. Moss, God bless you, my sister. You're going to experience uh, this pioneer woman of God. <laughs> you're going to experience offense because you're you're accustomed to a cult-like church that that thrives on your immaturity that thrives on your dysfunctional lifestyles so holy spirit now is is raising up people who have a different taste in their mouth that have a different appetite that want the word I don't want foolishness. I don't need smoke and mirrors. And you're going to think it's something wrong with them. No, God has brought you into that healthy church structure because you are living immature. These cult-like ministries that always preach about your somebody hurts you, always preaching about uh, uh, God going to get you through this. That's the biggest lie ever. You're going to have to get healthy, folks. You're going to have to mature. You're going to have to move into a place where you take responsibility and engage multiple platforms so you can mature and be engaged in the last day global renewing. Listen to me. Holy Spirit is stirring a global renewal. Holy Spirit is stirring a refreshing. And you're going to be very uncomfortable because it's going to confront you with your immaturity. And you're going to be running from church to church you're going to be talking about leadership. You're going to be gossiping about leadership. You're going to be angry about leadership. 
You're going to get offended by leadership because they teach the truth. And you don't want that. You don't want the truth. You don't want the truth. You don't want, you don't want nobody to tell you, listen, honey, I'm not doing that with you. Get in this Bible. Get in this word. Go get you a therapist. Go get you some drugs, some medication. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to allow you to attach to me in some codependent relationship. I don't want to be your spiritual mother. I don't want to do that. I'm the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm set to shepherd this house. I don't want to be your spiritual mother. I don't want everybody walking around calling me, hey, mother, I don't like I'm not dysfunctional and I don't want you dysfunctional. And so we're going to break all of these chains where you feel like you have access. And because you've got mother issues and papa issues and daddy issues and family issues that now you come into the church to try to develop, to try to recreate that people that is toxic and that there can be no revival in that church. There can be no awareness of Holy Spirit in that church if you are continuing to be mere men, to be mortals, to be human. There has to be a demand from a spiritually healthy church and spiritually healthy leadership and spiritually healthy systems to pull you out and pull you up. And grow you into the fullness of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, you gotta stop this foolishness. This is crazy. This is crazy. And all your pastors is your spiritual father. All your leaders are your spiritual mothers. This is crazy. This is cult-like behavior. My God, how many spiritual fathers do you have? How many spiritual mothers do you have? That is coded. And that is because when you get into, nothing will test your relationship with Christ, like joining a healthy church. Paul said, you guys are acting crazy. You are talking about, I'm a Paul. I'm of Cephas. I'm, I'm of Apollos. I'm of this one. He said, aren't you acting like mere men? Aren't you acting like crazy people? This is ridiculous. I mean, what is happening? And so leaders are being pulled into these dysfunctional relationships because you don't want a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You don't want a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You want a relationship with your leader, but you don't want a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You don't want a relationship with the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is going to make demands on you. Holy Spirit is going to make demands on you. The Spirit of God will not strive with you forever. Holy Spirit is going to make demands on you to mature. And the first thing that you're going to realize when you get in a healthy church is that your tricks are for kids. <laughs> that the tricks that you played in the last seven churches don't, doesn't work here. Tricks are for kids. And when you come, and when you come into a spiritually healthy environment, it's going to expose your legalistic perspectives. You're going to get challenged with all the stuff you think is holy. And all of the stuff you think is, is, is from God because a spiritually healthy church doesn't put emphasis on that kind of stuff. <laughs> You're going to find yourself offended by leaders who teach the truth. Woo, Rabbi Hashem. Woo, Sapa. Woo, Shakanda Mashika Bahanda. You're going to feel rejected by your pastors and your leaders because they're not controlling. They're not controlling. They don't look to you. They don't need to control you. They don't tell you where you can go, what you can wear, where you have to live, how you can. They don't tell you that. They're not controlling. And so you're going to feel rejected. 
You're going to feel rejected because you're used to having toxic leadership, codependent relationships with your leaders. People say, oh, they don't, she don't know what I can bring her. I don't want none of it. I don't want none of it. See, what you don't understand is I don't want none of you. I don't want it. My job is to present you as a chaste version to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my job. I don't want you. I don't want what you bring. I, I don't want you. <laughs> she don't know what I offer. I don't want to know. I don't even care to have that kind of conversation with you. But that's how you win the last five places. And when you get in a place that they don't want what you offer, that they're, they're, they're not impressed with what you say you bring, and that all they really want is for you to grow up in Christ, and to walk by faith and to live by the spirit of God, you get offended. And so you're going to feel rejected because a healthy church, a spiritually healthy church is not a controlling church. These are not controlling leaders. And so you have to face the fact at some point that where you thought you were spiritually, you really are not. <laughs> you really are not. Oh, God, who am I teaching? Who am I teaching now? And so this is why now we must teach you how to love Holy Spirit. You have to love Holy Spirit. You have to rely on Holy Spirit, not your shepherd, not these other relationships. Because Holy Spirit will always glorify Jesus Christ. And so in a healthy and a, a, a non-toxic church environment, renewal is happening. Growth is happening. People are growing up in the spirit. People are growing up in the Holy Ghost. Things are happening in the atmosphere. And you're going to either have to come up or you're going to be exposed. You're going to be corrected. You're going to get rebuked. You're going to get aligned. You're going to feel a different kind of way because you're not growing. When Holy Spirit is moving you in a place where it's healthy and none of these cult-like relationships exist, when you don't have access, you don't get mothered, you don't get fathered, you don't have to take up 9 million hours with your leader. Because the leader is teaching you how to love Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit will teach you how to love Jesus. The more you engage Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to teach you how to engage Jesus Christ. Woo! Shatamakishkoto. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Some of you are not healthy. Go get well, stop trying to make us be to you what you did not have in childhood. That is dysfunctional. You must grow in the spirit. You must grow in Holy Spirit. And when you begin to grow, and love and engage holy spirit there's a stirring to maturity there's a stirring to fruitfulness there's only so much a church that is toxic that is teaching you to be toxic teaching you that god is going to vindicate you because everybody doing you wrong there's only so much of that you can take there's only so much of that. That's why they those churches are big. They grow fast because they are not healthy environments. The messages are not healthy. They're not demanding that you grow up. They are giving you just cause for your being immature. So those churches grow fast and big, literally overnight. But it's not really growth, it's swelling because the people are not healthy and the people are not growing. 
And if the light ever comes on for the people that, okay, I've been in this long enough, I need to find a grow. I need to grow. Then those churches have multiple turnovers. But when you get in a healthy church, you find people been there 20, 30, 40 years. Why? Because they're growing. They're healthy. It's, they're fruitful. They're productive. <laughs> Woo, who am I talking to? Who, who, who is hearing this? I, I, somebody say, help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody put that in the chat. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, folks, you've got to get healthy. All of this immaturity and crying and whining and you don't want to grow up and you don't want to be saved and you don't want to. No, folks. Ooh, by my seat. Are you listening to me? A healthy church is not going to give you access like that. A healthy church is not going to be running downtown with you and hanging with you. No. So what is God working on? There's an army of God's people who want God more than anything. And your ultimate desire is to please him and to give the masses the message of redemption from sin, from bondage, from fear and religion. That's what God is doing. He's stirring a global renewal. He is stirring a global revival. And if you are passionate about hearing God's voice, if you are passionate about walking with Jesus, if you are passionate about experiencing the power, the presence of Holy Spirit, then you are a candidate for this end time prophetic community. <laughs> Woo, Rabbi Shekhamanasiya. Woo, Shekhamahata. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can go to the hospital, thank you, Valerie, and you can be present with all types of multiple disorders and diseases, but you don't want to live there. You don't want to live there. You want to get well. You want to go back home. You want to live a productive life. You want to live a fruitful life. And if you are passionate about hearing God's voice, if you are passionate about walking with Jesus and experiencing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, then you are a candidate for this end time prophetic community. But there won't be toxic folk in that community. There won't be toxic behavior in this community. There won't be toxic preaching in this community. There won't be toxic and cult-like behaviors in this community Woo, because this community this prophetic end time community is going to be the catalyst for global renewal and refreshing you got to ask yourself the question how long am i going to be sick how long am i going to be unhealthy how long am i going to hang out with unhealthy people how long am I going to keep going to this unhealthy church? How long am I going to seek unhealthy relationships with spiritual leaders? How long am I going to be a wanderer and never a producer? How long am I going to pray about this? When am I going to be free? Because I want to be a part of an end time prophetic community that's going to be useful to the global renewal and refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me carefully. The more you love Holy Spirit, the more you engage Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to teach you to love Jesus, to live for Jesus. The more you engage, the more you love Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to grow you up and show you where your life is out of alignment with Jesus Christ. Folks, the more you love Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to stir you to get areas of your life in divine order. The more you love Holy Spirit, the more Holy Spirit is going to show you how to love Jesus, how to live for Jesus. 
how to decontaminate your life, how to deconstruct these toxic theologies, these legalistic perspectives. And God is, God, God is stirring. God is doing this. God is doing this by his spirit, by his spirit. You got to decide, do I want to be a part of this or am I going to stand back and watch it? Oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Woo, Rabbi Shaka. Hey, listen, class is back in session. And I want you, the next six weeks, this segment of teaching is about how Holy Spirit is stirring a global renewal and a refreshing for those of us that will engage in healthy relationships in our churches, in our homes, in our jobs, in our lives. You cannot be a part of this end time move and you're not helping. Well, I gotta go. <laughs> Woo, I'm so glad you went back. But get ready for the stirring of the Holy Spirit, of global outpourings. You want to be a part of this end time prophetic community. Woo, Rabbi <laughs>